Hey guys, it's Strutter here and it's the 25th of November 2013. This video is going to be mostly about silver and uh, related issues, quantitative easing, that kind of thing, supply and demand. But I want to start off with a look at the weekly silver chart. Each bar, of course, is one week and you're looking at about a year and a half to two years of time. It goes back to the beginning of 2012 almost on the left there. As you can see on the right hand side, we're now sitting just above 20 bucks. We've come up a little bit off the most recent low and that recent low was a low going back about a quarter of a year back to the beginning of August. The top here at 35 bucks, that was the QE3 to infinity announcement, the point where everyone said, okay, that's it, now metals are gonna go through the roof. But apparently, what we didn't know was that doubling the amount of dollars in existence actually increases their value, not decreases. You know, you'd think it would be the other way around, but this is a special kind of economy. It doesn't actually work that way. So silver has gone from 35 to $20 in the face of all that extra stimulus. That's what, uh, about $1.5 trillion being added to the U.S. money supply? Hmm. And we could look at the gold chart, but it's exactly the same, so let's move on. Bitcoin, briefly, it has been consolidating just under 900 It had a very volatile time when it first touched 900 It actually pulled back down to 450 or so. I thought it might come down to 400 but uh, it only came down to 450 and then has recaptured that sort of 800 range and now looks like it's testing 900 again. And when it breaks out from there, I expect it to go uh, probably about 1500 to 2000 fairly quickly. You knew this was next, didn't you? The U.S. Mint sales. And they've added, uh, what's that, 0 0.331 onto the 1.5 even that they had there um, from last week. And if the pattern holds true, they're going to update this tomorrow for some reason to 2.000000 million and uh, right now we have a grand total of just over 41 million for the year as a reminder 39.8 was the grand total from 2011 the all-time best year so we are now soaring far above that all-time record from 2011 even though the mint is not reporting their november numbers correctly one thing i want to say before i move on to the graph and have a look at how that uh, 41 million compares to past years is the U.S. Mint has had multiple times this year where they had uh, shutdowns in their production. They had to have an outage of um, Silver Eagles in January, I think also April and, and July or August, I think, I can't remember, one of the other months. Um, but a few times during the year they've had shortages, outages, they had to allocate their product to different uh, vendors and stuff like that. There just wasn't enough. There isn't enough to go around of the stuff. And as we know, the U.S. Mint no longer has to use American silver to make their silver eagles. I think they're importing it from Mexico primarily. Uh, but if that ever ran out, the U.S. would be in big trouble because I, there's just not enough silver in the world to meet the demand uh, for bullion just in this one country. Uh, it's just out of control right now, the demand. But I'm just letting the Mint know you guys are on notice now. We are going to be buying a lot of silver next year, okay? the world is going to be buying a lot of Silver Eagle bullion coins. So you're going to need to make a lot more. And uh, I know you don't want to sell silver. I know that you just do it because you have to. It's in the Constitution. It's in the Coinage Act. You, you know, you, you don't have a choice. You have to sell silver to the people. But you try your darndest to make these numbers as low as possible, to underreport, to hide the data. Uh, you don't advertise your product. Heaven forbid you ever advertise your product and have uh, you know people actually coming and uh, have more demand coming into the market no it's very obvious that you don't want to sell silver we know that but you have to so you're on notice that you're going to need to increase your facilities next year there's going to be you know four million five million six million seven million eagle months all the year through and you need to be prepared for that so this is your notice now and next year i don't want to hear any garbage about there wasn't enough time to make all the silver eagles for demand so we're just gonna sell two million this month and then we'll see how it goes next month no 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 you will sell the silver that the people want to buy period and if it's at ridiculously low prices too bad moving right along there we go 90 percent of the year is done and we're at 41 million now significantly higher than the 2011 total and of course significantly higher than any other total from past years as well so 2013 is the all-time highest year for silver bullion sales demand for physical silver bullion has never been higher than it is right now 
It's very sad, but not unexpected, that the mainstream media would put something like this out for the public. This is supposedly written by financial experts over at the Vancouver province, the big newspaper here, and this is what they're telling the public. This is paraphrasing, of course, but in the first sentence it said, the stock market was up again this week due to reduced fears the Fed will cut back on QE. So in other words, the Fed is expected to keep on printing money out of thin air, and the stock market loves that kind of thing. So they expect it to keep going up. And then in the second sentence, they said gold and silver was down again this week due to concerns the Fed will soon cut back on QE, and they expect it to continue going down. So they're using two very opposite and completely incompatible conditions to simultaneously justify the stock market going up and gold and silver going down. It doesn't make any sense. You might as well say something like, violence is peace, or black is white, or hate is love. You know, it doesn't make any sense. It's doublespeak. It's known to be wrong, but you just say it, and people are like, okay. There's the NASDAQ over the past five years. The NASDAQ is one of the three major indexes in the U.S. stock market. And in 2008, when the stock markets crashed, it went down to about 1,000. It's now at 4,000. So you have quadrupled your money if you invested in the NASDAQ. The Dow is up over double what it was then. It's now sitting at an all-time high. And the S&P is also up over double what it was then and is also sitting at an all-time high. So the U.S. stock market is at an all-time high. And we know that that's based off of quantitative easing. The U.S. economy has not grown by double and quadruple in the past few years. And the reason given for these phenomenal gains at least by the mainstream media, is that they don't believe that the Federal Reserve is going to cut back on their quantitative easing. In other words, they're just going to keep on printing money and it's going to find its way into the stock market. Back to the silver chart again. And once again, the reason that the silver chart is going down, at least according to the mainstream media, is that investors believe that the Federal Reserve is going to stop QE. Absolute insanity. You know, what explains this? And how long are we going to put up with this nonsense? How long are we going to put up with things that we know aren't real, that we know don't make any sense? Well, these people don't have any credibility. They don't have any history of being honest. They have a history, in fact, of being dishonest. We know that they're dishonest. We know that they're lying to us. So why are we going to put up with this anymore? Why aren't we being more noisy about this? We know it's not right. We know it's wrong. We know that the silver and gold demand is at an all-time high. And you can't just have something in demand at an all-time high and have it not go up. What's well, something else we can look at? Oh, I know, Bitcoin. Hmm, that's something that's in great demand right now. Huge demand. They're making it into currency all around the world. China's accepting it as a currency now. It's becoming a real currency. This is what people said would happen, and it's happening now. When something's at unprecedented, all-time high demand, and it's in finite supply, unlike the dollar, the price goes up. It has to. When something is at all-time high demand and it is finite, the price goes up. The U.S. stock market makes an all-time new high every week, and it has done that for months. How many times have I reported on that in this channel? Dozens of times. You can go back and look at my videos. I have a little clip in a lot of my videos that say, the U.S. stock market hit an all-time high today. All-time high all-time high. So the U.S. stock market and the U.S. economy, which is what it supposedly measures, has never been better than it is right now, even though fully half of the country is dependent on the government to eat. You probably understand what I'm getting at with all that, but let's go and look at a video I did a week ago. It's called There Is No Recovery, and I want to recreate that chart, and I want to look at it from a slightly different angle. Okay, as you'll remember, and if you don't, please go back and have a look at that video. It's not very long, and it was a pretty good one. The orange here is the stock market over the past five years. The bottom here on the left, indicated by that green arrow there, is the bottom of the stock market. And it's when they did QE1. Of course, that pushed the stock market up, but it began to get a little bit soft here again. And they did QE2 to push it up again. Now, why were they pushing up the stock market? Why did they want to print money to push up the stock market? Because people think that the stock market is a measure of the economy. It's not. It's just a measure now of how much money they're printing. But unfortunately, the people still believe that the stock market is indicative of health in the economy. So they're pushing it up and they're going to continue to push it up. So when the stock market really began to come back down again, they needed a lot of stimulus, so they invented something called QE3, or QE3 to infinity, which means they're going to do the same thing they did here with QE1 and QE2, but they're just going to do it every month instead of just one time. 
So every month from here on, they were printing money, buying mortgage-backed securities. Boom, the stock market made a new high, but it started to peter off again here, and they needed to do something called QE3 to infinity acceleration, which means we're just gonna print that much money, ah, but double it every month. We'll do it even more every month, okay? So here we go, and it ramped up the stock market, and now the stock market is just happily moving ahead $1,000 every month or so, and it's just going to keep on going, 17,000, 18,000, 19,000. As you'll remember, we can put that silver chart from the same time period overlapping on top, right about there. And what that shows is that silver responded to the same as the stock market here for QE1 and QE2 by going higher and higher and higher, but then at QE3 to infinity, it made a top instead of a bottom and hasn't seen that price since. And then when silver looked like it was going to start to recover here and start to move higher again, they hit it with QE3 to infinity acceleration, which just knocked it back further down. So silver responded opposite to the stock market once QE3 began. QE1 and QE2, exactly the same, moving up, making new highs. QE3 and QE3 acceleration only served to knock silver down. Today I thought, why not bring the gold chart in? So here's the gold chart over that exact same time period. And yeah, you can see exactly what happened. Line them up exactly right there. Gold bottom, the same time as the stock market and the silver here. Then it began to respond the same way as silver and the stock market moved up. Started to get a little bit sideways here. Then they hit it with QE2 and up it went. Made a new all-time high here. And then when QE3 came along, hmm, same thing as silver. It came down and it's never been at that high again. But it was about to get there again, right here. Oh, but they hit it with QE3 acceleration and gold came back down along with silver. So it looks like the question is, why did QE1 and QE2 push gold and silver up as expected along with the stock market, but QE3 had some kind of magical effect that caused silver and gold to come down and never reach that high again, twice? And why, as they continue those QE programs, do silver and gold move down every week while the stock market makes new highs every week? This gives an indication of recovery, not just recovery, but amazing recovery. And it makes gold and silver, which many people call the canary in the coal mine for the economy, go down so the economy looks like it's recovering. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip the second half of this chart upside down right there where they did QE3. So rotate, flip vertical, and line it up like that. There, that's I think the proper gold chart. And why not silver as well? Right there is where they did QE3 to infinity, so we'll flip the chart at that point. And there we go. Line it up. There we go. That's the proper silver chart. Now we can bring that back over. And we'll put it on the chart right there, line it up the same on the left as before. There we go, that looks better. Gold 2, line it up on the left. Yep, there we go. And there you have it. This is a five-year chart of the U.S. stock market in orange, gold in red, and silver in blue. And true to silver's form, it is more volatile than gold. So when it goes up, it goes up more. And when it goes down, it goes down more. So you can see that holds true there. This also makes a lot more sense now because QE3 pushes gold and silver up as it should. So does QE3 accelerating as it should. No more magic tricks by the Fed. And this corresponds to a gold price of about 2,500. And it corresponds to a silver price of about 80 to $90 US. This really is what the gold and silver charts would look like if QE was allowed to do what it actually does, which is drive up the price of anything denominated in dollars that you're printing out of thin air. Stocks, precious metals, Bitcoin, everything. That's not gonna happen, but I thought, well, what I do have is I have some silver, and what I do have is I have some viewers. So I'm essentially gonna ask you to buy them an ounce of silver. I invite you to check out that video there. I'll put a link down below. It was called, If Silver is the Revolution's Money, Let Hip Hop Be Its Music. I've met, become fans of, and made friends with even, uh, three rappers known as Filthy, Diesel Automatic, 
and a spirit. Very revolutionary music, very good music, free music. I don't think you can really go wrong there. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to scrape together a few rounds to send these guys. I don't have anything of my own to give, but like I said in the video, I am trying to get something uh, from my subscribers, from my viewers. So if you will buy one of those guys an ounce of silver, I would really, really appreciate that. I think it's going to go a long way in you know, interconnecting some communities that aren't necessarily all that connected right now and aren't all that different. And I think we could use a little connection with the hip-hop community. So go to that video, and if you can help me out, then follow the link to my site. Buy one of the rounds. You know, buy one for yourself and buy one for them if you want. And later this week I'll announce the results. So far I've already actually had two people buy an ounce of silver for these guys. Two doesn't really go into three all that evenly, so I'm hoping to get at least one more ounce bought, maybe a few. Uh, if I could send the, each of these guys maybe one sativa and one indica, that would be great. Hey, you could even buy them a maple if you want. My site has maples. I do want to send these guys some silver and uh, thank them for their work and thank them for everything that they're doing and continue to build a relationship with them and others like them because the revolution is coming, the revolution is here. And joining forces with peaceful revolutionary fighters like these guys is a positive step for the gold and silver community. And making connections with people like this, with groups like this, is very valuable, and I don't think it should be overlooked. So if you're interested, please go to the link below. And before I go, I want to encourage anyone who's not using Google+, like myself, to continue to not use Google+. We don't need it. We're going to get by without it. I don't know what's going to happen. We can't go on forever without a comment section in this, in this channel. It's just not going to happen. Um, but... I'm not ready to give up on YouTube yet. I think there might be a chance that there's going to be something that changes. And um, if it doesn't, I have some ideas in mind. And if you have ideas, feel free to hit me up. My private message box still works. You can send me messages. I'll reply. Because it's the only way to stay in touch. I'm getting like 20, 30, 40 messages a day now in my inbox. And that's how I'm keeping track of people. And that's how I'm keeping in touch. I don't have a comment section anymore, I don't get any feedback on my videos, but there are literally thousands and millions of us out there who aren't taking Google Plus and are still using the site to view videos, and we communicate with private messages now, so please join us. And a quick reminder, I have a big project that I'm still working on, and that's going to be coming out soon. I'm very excited about it, so stay tuned for that. Talk to you guys soon. If you talking revolution, you can roll with us, but if you ain't, you should man up and grow some